Another low-scoring affair unfolded in Buffalo, where Bills coach Chuck Knox welcomed Marv Levy's Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs quickly helped themselves to a Joe Ferguson pass, and linebacker Gary Spaney turned in the longest run of the day, 61 yards. Unfortunately for the Chiefs, no Kansas City back could do better. The Chiefs finished with just three field goals for a day's work. Without all-pro running back Joe Cribbs, Buffalo capitalized on the talents of three gifted receivers. The first 12-year veteran Frank Lewis, number 82, rang up the Bills' first score of the day. Lewis set a perfect example for the Bills' newest prize, their first round draft pick of 1982. His name is Perry Tuttle. As a college freshman at Clemson, number 81 studied under a wide receiver who would become his teammate in the pro ranks as well. The man is Jerry Butler, number 80. Butler is earning his doctorate in a Bills uniform. Butler's reception made the Buffalo. Jerry Butler and the Bills had come center stage to accept accolades for win number one. In Buffalo, the Bills had to reach into their bag of tricks after Viking tight end Bob Brewer, number 82, burned them with one of two second period touchdowns. Buffalo began their comeback just before intermission. Not magic, really. Quarterback Joe Ferguson just got hot. His touchdown pass to Frank Lewis with 14 seconds left in the half gave the Bills enough momentum to carry them over the Vikings in the final 30 minutes. Ferguson and Lewis combined for 39 more yards in a furious fourth quarter finish. Then for the second straight week, the game-winning touchdown belonged to Jerry Butler, number 80, as the Bills came from way back to win by one, 23 to 22. While Buffalo rained on the Vikings parade in Tampa Bay, it just rained. Charges were leveled in Buffalo. Holdout running back Joe Cribbs, number 20, was also a favorite candidate for the Gallows. The Cribbs sentence was reprieved when his fumble at the Miami Dolphin goal line was converted into a touchdown by quarterback Joe Ferguson. Ferguson toppled off his lofty pedestal very quickly. Facing an alert and well-schooled Dolphin defense, the Bills quarterback completed but 12 of his 24 passes, and the Bills were intercepted six times. Unbeaten Miami translated these breaks into three field goals and nosed out the Bills nine to seven. nor the Bills' attacks were a three-ring circus. McKenzie, number 67, holds the Buffalo record for games played and still possesses the speed and power to lead the Mercurial Cribs around the corner. Cribs and Leafs, the top rushing tandem in pro football, give K. Stevenson a solid base on which to construct his new offense. The defense saved a distinguished performance for the Baltimore Colts. Not once 
did the confused Colts cross midfield. For the day, Baltimore's offense produced only 88 total yards, a single game record for the Buffalo defense. The Meyer in Milwaukee as the Packers and Bills wallowed on the floor of County Stadium. The two teams combined for nine fumbles and the Packers turned two Buffalo miscues into early field goals. And in the end, it was the Packers who had the sure hands. First end around to wide receiver James Lofton and a Lynn Dickey to John Thompson's scoring pass helped the Packers outmatch the slumping Bills 33 to 21. Our fans were treated to the type of football that uh, they're used to seeing from the Buffalo Bills at best. I think in December when Pittsburgh came to town. Pittsburgh came in on a roll, they were hot. It was a big game for us, it was a must win for us. And our guys went out and did it and did it in such a convincing manner. For Terry Bradshaw, it became evident early that the Bills were breathing fire. Drawn and quartered by Sherman White on the field, Bradshaw didn't fare a lot better in the stands. Pittsburgh's attempts to generate a pass offense were rudely rebuffed. In 60 minutes, the four-time Super Bowl champion did not gain a yard through the air and wound up with a net passing total of minus two. The Steelers, used to dominating people, found the shoe on the other foot. Linebacker Jack Lambert, who views good defense as an art form, was looking at a Rembrandt. Let's see what Bradshaw do. Back to pass on a quick count. He is rocked and grabbed and back by Fred Spurman. He grabbed him by the jersey and pulled him down. Back to throw, Bradshaw. And he is hit and paved in by Sherman White. That's the second sack on Bradshaw. Boy, this defense is fired up. And back to throw. Bradshaw under brush. And he is hit and fumbled. The ball is loose. Isaiah Robertson calls on it at the 10 yard line. The Bills' defense has absolutely been fantastic. I don't think you could play a better defensive game. In a year when results fell short of expectations, the Steeler victory stood as a lighthouse of the Bills' potential. Buffalo did not make the playoffs, but the Bills continued to be a contender. Their September of promise became a December of doubt. But Kay Stevenson has listened, and from deep inside his Buffalo Bills, he hears a healthy heartbeat. Character. The character of our football team. Back Melvin Carver's rushing performance helped produce more favorable results. Against the Buffalo Bills, the rookie from Nevada, Las Vegas, cashed in on both his rushing and receiving talents. Carver's two scores lifted the Bucks to a 24-16 fourth quarter lead. However, Joe Ferguson's gimpy knees proved to be an ace in the hole as he hobbled into the end zone to tighten the score at 24-23. Unfortunately, minutes later, with time running out, Ferguson, like a gambler down to his last chip, was forced to go for it all. Ferguson's gamble came up short as Neil Colsey's interception preserved the Bucks' one-point win. 
The victory up Tampa Bay's record to three and four. However, with only two games left, their playoff chances appear doubtful. Unlike the New York Jets, whose five wins have put them in Fat City.